Hello, I'm at Rockard Studios in Blackpool today with Dan Atkinson. Uh, we're going to have a look around. Productioncom at Rockhard Studios in Blackpool. Um, show us your mics. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> uh, right, I mean, where else to start but the beautiful U47? I mean, this thing has a name for itself for a reason, right? Absolutely. <clears throat> ah, there it is. <laughs> I, I was just saying, I don't think I've seen a new for as, as newer 47. Well, this <laughs> is. I mean, this is probably about 12 months old. No, I um, <laughs> But this is the the reissue, um, right? I think because obviously they stopped producing new 47s sure. for, yeah. for a long time. Um, so this is the completely original mm. design. They didn't mm. change anything. It's just that it's new and not. Yeah, because yeah, uh, they went out of fashion for a while. Yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Well, it's. I don't know why, because... Because um, people uh, need new things. Yeah. <laughs> 87. 87, another new one? Yeah, uh, probably a little bit older, maybe four or five years old, that sure. one. Um, again, pretty studio standard nowadays, although... Absolutely classic, though. I'm used big to, fan yeah. of <clears throat> I tend to use the U87 now um, mainly, I mean, it's still in figure of eight, yeah. um, Mainly as as a mid side, sure. um, Mike. Um, it's my go to for <laughs> for a mid side. Well, the SM Seven B is always a yeah is always a um, a favourite these days. Yeah, of course. Um, I think we've talked in other videos about people modding fifty sevens, um, right. you know, whipping out the the transformer. Yes. Um, but uh, you know, you can't beat that for for a. You um, can't. I mean, well, there's one set up on the <laughs> uh, on the stand from from today's session. And su as surprisingly well. versatile as a, as a dynamic mic, yes. always fine. Vocals, obviously, snare. Uh, I tend to use course, a, yeah. uh, a pair of these mm. uh, on the snare top and bottom. Oh, nice. People ask me time and time again. I, I want a mic. What's, mm -hmm. what's I'm, I'm a singer and a, I play guitar and blah blah. And, blah. and people want to condense a condenser mic. Yeah, but they, they do. And really what, what want condenser mic? Should I get? Uh, I've got three hundred quid. <laughs> Don't bother. Yeah. Just get, get yeah. a, um, an FM seven. Top tip for young producers and stuff yes. who are at uni or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Maybe save up <clears throat> Christmas money or <laughs> something. You know. Yeah, and this is it. it it's, it's just get yourself one, and they're bomb proof. Four one fours. Come, come with us down here. <laughs> Are these which which version are these? So the XL twos, yeah, yeah, the Still gold ones, stereo pair. So what are you using these for? Um, again, I used to use them as um, as mid side yeah. um, mics, room mics, uh, sure. primarily for for drum tracking. Mm -hmm. Until we got the U forty seven, yeah, and then the U eighty seven became the mid side mic. Yeah. But uh, then what? They're just brilliant utility mics. Yeah. Uh, you know, they don't really have much of a sound. Mm -hmm. They're pretty clear. They just do what they do, uh, and they do it nice and cleanly. And sometimes I find, like, you know, that might be the go-to mic. So, certainly the old ones with the manual switch yeah. on might be the go-to mic for that vocal that you just can't Definitely. quite find the right mic for or something. Well, had, but you've got um, the stereo bar as well. Yeah. The 421. The 421, the mic that always falls off. <laughs> yeah, oh, clear. God, that's a nightmare. Right, do you want to grab on, one out? They sound amazing. They, they do, and, and they and do, like, and you know the amount of time these things end up on the floor because you've caught yeah. that little. Well, do you know what I do with them? I put the cable in first and wrap the cable around the mic ah, stand so that it can't. And the then floor. that's my that's my <laughs> first because I'm pretty bad for dropping stuff. So with mics, <laughs> but even if you don't drop them, some drummer will hit them with yes. a stick as he has done. With but they're pretty one, robust, aren't they? Oh, I mean, they like, are. I've yeah. used these. They are. There's, yeah, again, the ones, like, the, like the U47, there's, yeah. there's a reason these have such a name for themselves. And they are just, they're, they're, they're rugged, they stand the test of time. They're not man, they're not massively expensive either. I no. don't know what the, I'm not sure what the retail on one of those is nowadays, but I can't even get the clip back on now. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of nice. It's, uh, I bought this quite some time ago when I couldn't afford a 121. Right. Uh, this is the Royer 101. Okay. Um, Royer 101? Yeah. I don't think they make them anymore. Uh, I think they were quite short-lived. Um, nice. 
But yeah, mono drum overhead. Um, just yeah. yeah. Um, depending on where we are in this room, mm. I obviously if the kit's a bit further towards the back, the ceiling's a bit lower, so uh, you know those reflections are a little more sort of closed in or a bit tighter in. But if you are coming over this end of the room where the ceiling's a lot higher putting that right quite high up yeah. uh, actually more you've got a lot closer towards the ceiling than than the kit yeah um, i tend to find that works quite nicely for me okay <laughs> the d310s yeah i used to use this um on uh guitars and and vocals and all sorts really? of stuff in the very first studio i worked in um, we had one of these and um it was actually like in ways not that nice but it, for some things like it was really yeah. cool i i think i used to use that as you can probably tell from the dints in the head on a snare right I, <laughs> bit of that yeah i've had this but i don't know where it came from um it might have come from i think i might have found it at a car boot right it might be one of those things that cost me about two quid for yeah. a car boot um years and years ago before i had the studio um and I just used to stick it on a snare. And it, it did the job at the time. Talking of weird things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there seems to be some kind of shower head. What is it? <clears throat> right, this is one of those eBay finds. Um, there's loads of them out there, not particularly rare. Mm -hmm. It's a World War II uh, microphone hand number three. Uh, World enough. War II radio mic, right. I guess. Um, I bought this for one specific purpose on one session um, that we were working on. I was tracking um, with a client, and we just needed we needed a sound that was uh, as you would expect that to sound, basically. Sure. And it just, yeah, it it was perfect for it. It's incredibly low output. I actually ended up um, I can't remember how we rigged it up to get a decent output on it in the end. Um, but it, it went through a couple of uh, a couple of different bits and bobs to get it into the mic before it got, hit the mic pre. Um, this cable is uh, that's you know, if that doesn't invoke a, a feeling <laughs> of something in you, that's original, woven. authentic World War Two yeah. cable right there. Excellent. Um, yeah, I mean for that filtered vocal sound, yeah, yeah I, we can record that through a U forty seven and stick an EQ on it all day long, but. That cost me about tenner, yeah. uh, and it actually produced. And then you're committing exactly, you yeah, to commit to a sound and... that is irreplicable. <coughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, of <coughs> commit to the sound before, um, you know, before it hits sure. tools, uh, sure. and that way you, because you know when you're when you're tracking, um, I guess you, you if you think of an idea, it works and it sounds mm. nice, and you can overthink an idea. Yeah. You can come back in the next day and, or you know, a couple of days later and work on the same session. And think, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm not as big a fan of that. Because if you're distorting in the mic, you're not going to yeah. end up with any artifacts from plugins. Yeah. You might get sort of aliasing and, and, exactly. and strange, strange I mean, that's just a, the worst sounding mic you can ever imagine, but that is exactly <laughs> what we needed for, uh, for that session or that particular part. What have we got? <laughs> ah, it's just yes. some other Shaw stuff and. Uh, what? More another SM7. SM7. <laughs> uh, Everywhere. A pair of AKG pencils. Right. This deceiving box that says kettle, kettle leads. leads. So there must be something. Here's ah, a pair of Neumanns. Yeah, there's something interesting. <laughs> I am... This is like a really nice mic collection, actually. <laughs> Certainly for... I mean, I've been in bit, much bigger studios that have had nowhere near... Like really? Yeah. It's taken a long time to build yeah. up. Another so pair of... Hidden gem here. Yeah. Into mics. <laughs> Come to well, I, 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 it's one thing I, I don't know. I just like to collect mics. There's always a purpose for a different mic. But <laughs> these are my most recent purchases. Oh right, okay. Um, and recently, I think these are. Um, this is a set of Earthworks. Um, They're very shiny. Yeah, Earthworks drum mics. Um, <coughs> they had an offer on them recently, and mm. there was some stupidly cheap price for a week or whatever it was. So okay. I thought I've got to pick that up. I can't miss that. Um, that's a kick drum mic yep. you've got in your hand um, which I, I get that out and stick it on a kick drum people look at me like I've gone mental sure. because it doesn't look like that well your eardrum is only it's yeah, big, it's it, this so. is it I mean, people did seem to think that you know, oh, it's a big drum it's, it's got to have this massive diaphragm now and that just works perfectly um, so you're enjoying them and we've got a visitor we have a visitor now Winston, <laughs> Winston's getting involved 
<laughs> yeah, so um, this is the, the DK7 set, I think they call it, drum kit 7, sure. uh, I guess because there's seven mics in it. Tom, little clip on Tom mics or screw yeah. on Tom mics. I bought this, I mean, I don't suppose it particularly does anything that the other mics in the collection don't yeah. already. It's just I find this so useful when I'm in, um, if I'm in with a producer and an artist uh, in a writing session yes. uh, primarily, rather than sort of full-on tracking sessions, yeah. I can grab this set of mics, seven cables, yeah. and have a kit mic'd up in 10 minutes, yeah. um, which when you're working, a lot, you know, a lot of producers we work with, I need, well, we've got this idea, we need this now, can we get this done now? And I, I find clip-ons, um, two things. Yeah. I always feel like there's some transmission through them, which yeah. can be good. And I always feel like drummers feel less, uh, less encased. Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, it. They're a bit less claustrophobic. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, and they just feel like they're playing. I suppose it's one of those things that drummers will be used to live, rather. Because yeah. one thing you, you see with the difference between a, a kit set up live or a mm. kit set up in the studio is yeah, in the studio you're surrounded by tens of, of mic stands mm -hmm. and uh, you know mics dangling yeah. all over the shop. Um, whereas them, it's just so simple. I grab the case, grab some cables, stick them around the kit, and before you know it, I've got a, a, a kit ready to, excuse me, a kit ready to record within about 10 minutes. And, Brilliant. Um, you know, whereas I could spend... Um, you know, an hour or so, or a couple of hours, just miking up a kit with all of the other stuff. Yeah. If you're just in a writing session and need to quickly get some drum ideas down, and you don't want to program them, that's Absolutely. Really, sometimes quicker than firing up a sampler and try to find. Which, yeah, finding the, <laughs> finding the parts. This is it. Great. Well, thanks for showing us your mics. No, it's all right. That's, um, uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs> you should check out Rock Hard Studios in Blackpool because they've got loads of cool <laughs> stuff. Take 73. Do you want a sink clap as well? Hang on. I just need to adjust my... Uh, like, subscribe and ring that bell and stay alerted to any new videos that we bring out.